So this is the Hona London Kingsway. The frets have been replaced at some point uh, very badly. This is going to be part of uh, there's going to be a full luthier's teardown of this guitar where we look inside and just do the whole thing but um, this is one of the worst refrets I've seen in a long time. Not a single one of these frets appears to be properly seated. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> Things just got real, folks. So I've got no truss rod and I do have a really rather huge uh, bow in the neck. It is, I've got nearly a millimeter of space in the middle. My 0.7 millimeters or 0 0.028 of an inch uh, feeler gauge uh, it slips underneath that. That is not good enough. So I have got a decision to make. I've got a bad fret job. I have got no truss rod and I've got too much forward bow. I want it to at least be somewhat playable. My problem is I could probably actually hit each one of these frets that's too high in, seat them properly and just work with them. Or I could do a refret, rip all of these out and put in fret wire with a wider tang to see if I can put a back bow into the neck, try and straighten it. Since I am putting this guitar in the museum, I'm going to do the job properly. This is a refret. These frets are not original. This fretboard surface is not original. Can you see, can you see just how bad that is. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera. I am very interested in seeing how much I can correct the bowing in this neck uh, just by use of the frets. This isn't actually that bad. So essentially we've got a hump here at the 12th fret and then a hollow. Right. Hi. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> yes, I did just poop myself just a little bit. Uh, so it goes up to a hump and there's a hollow. Uh, in reality, I'm going to take these frets out and level the fretboard a little bit and then put in frets with a bit of a back bow. I'm going to smash the tangs down and be good. So uh, yeah, initially you start out with a soldering iron, warm up each fret as you go. This loosens up any glue that's holding the frets in, which is always a, a, a possibility, but it also loosens up the, the grain of the wood. So, and then your fret puller comes in from the end. And there we go. In this shot, you can see just how bad the uh, the fret job was. On top of not actually flattening the fretboard or sorting that out, they're just being put in poorly, basically. Let's knock this nut out, shall we? <laughs> that's got a nut slot cut into the uh, fret. That's even that's really really bad. I came out easily. Oh, and I suppose there's, uh, yeah, there's a few few chunks out there. I've got some rosewood dust now, so I'm just going to fill those with uh, with dust and super glue first. I didn't want perfection. There's still some artifacts and scratches and bits and pieces. Once this is all oiled, though, it's going to be uh, it's going to look okay. A little bit of relief, not bad. There was a major hump over here. Use my 
fret leveling saw just to make sure that the slots are clean and deep enough. This is not the right um, radius. I want it to be slightly tighter than the radius of the fretboard, whatever that is. That is almost perfectly flat now, so just the fret wire going in as itself, as long as these slots are not too wide, is going to push it back a little bit and we'll end up with, under tension, the relief we want. Hopefully. Let's install some frets, shall we? 12. 12 it is. This is something that I don't use very often because most of what I do is fretting a brand new neck where I don't have to worry about a carved section, etc. Uh, this, however, this works very well on an existing instrument. I use wood glue to fill the slots. And if the slots are filled with something that dries and ends up being solid, you end up with a, a neck with a lot more tuning stability. Okay, just to make sure, let's see. So there's a little bit of squeeze out there. That'll do. So those went in fairly easily. I want to put a little bit more tension on here. So I'm going to take my fretting hammer and I'm just going to mushroom the tang out. So it uh, sort of compresses down and uh, that's going to make that a lot easier. Or at least put a little bit more tension in things. Using a small triangular file, just chamfer over the edges, the internal edges of the fret slots, and this helps locate the frets much easier. It means that they're not likely to tip over as you go in. See that? Nice. This also reduces uh, the possibility of tear out when uh, the next poor sucker has to uh, <laughs> pull the frets out. Ah, perfectly flat. No back bow, which is what I was really going for. But uh, yeah, that is, uh, once we've got a set of nines on there, we'll have enough tension to, uh, yeah, have a nice comfortable guitar. Let's snip these ends off, shall we? Fred Rock is very cool. Cleaner and restorative will be left to uh, soak in for 10 minutes or so, rub off the excess, and I'm going to leave this overnight because, uh, well, it's dinner time. Back in the morning. <laughs> Thank you.
Not the best neck pocket, but it is actually stable. And there we go. Now, uh, this, this is going to be part of there's going to be a full luthier's teardown of this guitar where we look inside and just do the whole thing but um, this is also the first refret that i've filmed for the channel in years so uh, this is a standalone video but uh, the end result is <laughs> feels like, well, feels not unlike a guitar that was made yesterday. It's not perfect, but the fret job pretty much is. The spacing's a bit weird. I haven't changed the spacing on the bridge, but uh, yeah.